In construction, there's often a risk of falling from a height when erecting structures, during roof installation, and during renovation and finishing work. It's necessary to implement appropriate protective measures according to the situation. When there's a risk of falling more than three meters, it's preferable to install a guardrail. But when that's not possible, it's mandatory to wear a harness. Wearing a harness implies that it's connected to an anchor by a fall arrest connector, forming a fall arrest system. A fall arrest system comprises three main components. An anchor, a fall arrest connector, and a harness. The fall arrest connector is the set of equipment that connects the harness to the anchor, such as connectors, energy absorbers, and lanyards. At a minimum, the fall arrest connector must consist of a lanyard with an energy absorber or a self-retracting lifeline. These components are found in other systems, like systems for working in confined spaces, for suspension or descent, work positioning, and ladder work. In this video, you'll find the characteristics of fall arrest systems only. Here are some examples of fall arrest systems used in construction. When working on sloped roofs, it's common to use a row grab with a vertical lifeline connected to a fixed anchor. Self-retracting lifelines connected to fixed anchors are also common. During the assembly of scaffolding, a tie-off bar with a lanyard is a practical and easy-to-use system. And on some lifting devices, you have to wear a harness connected by a lanyard to a fixed anchor on the device. Continuous anchor systems are less common in construction because their installation is complex and not suited to temporary work. All components of a system must comply with Canadian standardization norms indicated in the safety code for the construction industry. In Quebec, the fall arrest connector must limit the free fall height to 1.8 meters or the fall arrest force to 6 kN. A lanyard, including the energy absorber, must have a maximum length of 2 meters. The anchor must have a braking strength of at least 18 kN. You have to be particularly careful with online purchases. Components could be standardized for recreational use or another country, but not for construction in Canada. All components can be damaged, degraded or contaminated and wear out according to the intensity and conditions of use and the environment. That's why it's necessary to check the general condition and operation of your equipment before each use. This allows for the detection of any anomaly that could keep it from properly functioning in the event of a fall. First, inspect the labels. They must be legible and present. All components must be inspected to ensure there are no signs of wear due to prolonged use. There must also be no cracks or deformations. Make sure there are no tears or cuts. You must check for stains, discoloration, paint or ink such as traces of marker. Do not use a component that shows signs of corrosion. Always make sure that the impact indicator is intact. In short, if there's a sign of damage, do not use the component. If a component has been used to stop a fall, whether the impact indicator has been activated or not, it can no longer be used. If a component has been altered in any way, it can't be used either. If you have doubts about the integrity of a component, do not use it and report it to your supervisor. In addition to daily inspection, all components must be inspected each year by a qualified person with the necessary skills. Annual inspections must be noted in a documented register.
To avoid injuries, the clearance distance to prevent hitting the ground in case of a fall must be planned. This is generally called fall clearance. To calculate the minimum required fall clearance, add the length of the lanyard, the deployment length of the energy absorber, the distance between the D-ring and the worker's toes, plus one foot of harness stretch, and a safety margin of two feet. In most cases, the minimum required fall clearance must be at least 4.5 meters. For a system with a vertical lifeline, to the calculation, you need to add the length of the rope and its elongation. The vertical distance traveled before the fall arrest system activates must be anticipated. This is the free fall distance. The worker's position relative to the rope grab affects the free fall distance. And the greater the free fall distance, the greater the deployment of the energy absorber. The free fall distance combined with the worker's weight affects the necessary fall clearance. To reduce the impact of a fall, work with the shortest possible lanyard and try to keep the rope grab above the shoulders. Pendulum effect is the side-to-side -side swinging motion after the fall is stopped. The greater the horizontal distance between the harness and the anchor point, the more the pendulum effect increases. If working near a structure, there is a risk of contact with obstacles during the fall. There is also a risk of contact with the structure on which you are working. To minimize the risk of injury, anchors should be placed horizontally at a maximum distance of 3 meters. And the angle created by the offset should not exceed 22 degrees. 22 degrees corresponds to the angle halfway between two anchors spaced 3 meters or less. Working in this zone reduces the risk of injury caused by the pendulum effect. That's why it's so important to always attach yourself to the nearest anchor. After a fall, the suspended worker must be unhooked within 15 minutes to avoid serious injuries. You must have a retrieval plan if a fall arrest system is being used. The harness and all the components used during the fall must be taken out of service. All components must be stored in a dry place, sheltered from the sun. They need to be kept away from chemicals and sharp objects that could damage them. Contaminated components can be washed following the manufacturer's instructions. Never dry them in the sun or near a heat source. The components of a fall arrest system form a whole. Take the time to choose compliant and appropriate models according to your tasks. Inspect your equipment and do not use it if you notice damage or if it's not working properly. Always plan your tasks when working at height. Calculate the necessary fall clearance and have a retrieval plan in case of a fall. Training is essential to reduce the risk of injury. Never improvise. If you have any questions or need assistance, APCHQ Advisors are here to help.